The eruption in the Reckoners Peninsula, which was long awaited since the February 8th eruption of 2024 in the Reckoners Peninsula, related to the Swarzenegger uh, volcanic system, has not materialized. We are seeing diminishing activity in this uh, volcanic system, which has affected the surrounding areas. The earthquakes of it actually has caused some damage to the town. And we expect that the magma actually laterally move toward the dike system in the north of that town, around four or five kilometers. But it was trapped. It seems the magma, two million uh, cubic meters of it, is actually wasted practically. It didn't erupt. Initially, we thought it is 1.3 million cubic meters. It didn't, uh, and the expectation was that by 5th of the March. Now we are seeing that the deep of this waste of the magma, which didn't sur- uh, surface as an eruption, was more than this. Now we are seeing 2 million cubic meters actually was that. This is based on the um, GPS data. This diagram shows the days passed after the magma accumulation under the Schwarzenegger power plant just started and to the day that it starts to laterally move. So we are seeing those uh, uh, movements didn't materialize in the say, a sense of eruption. So if now we continue uh, extrapolate from that point that we have now today, we expect that it reached the 13 million cubic meters threshold that actually is good for eruption. We had it in the previous eruption, 13 cubic mil- million cubic meters. This will be almost more or less around the new moon. Um, there is a little bit of academic snobbery by the geologists to ac- actually admit or uh, even study uh, any relation between the moon and the earth system on the tectonic tectonism, plate tectonism, and the magmatic uh, movements and the flexure of the earth as lithosphere. This is well known in the planetary geology. Uh, um, unfortunately, I have to admit that ge- this is beyond the knowledge of the geologists. The plates are something like this. We see, for example, the east-west side of the Reckoners Peninsula practically has flexure and volcanic systems that we have now with the rift valleys. All those fault lines show something like a floating uh, uh, bridge. And we have similar to that in the, in the satellite of Saturn, for example, in the Enceladus, we see something like that. Geologists are not able to actually comment on or deny anything on this because with the watered down mathematical courses that we don't have anymore uh, in the universities, in the geology courses, they're not in the position actually to talk about it. The shifts and the movements, even the structural geologists will know about that, are now not even much covered as it was before. We need somebody uh, out of the field of the geology, some somebody familiar with the uh, uh, celestial mechanics who can also understand planetary geology to study this. PhD students who are in this field are able to do this for us. Unfortunately, a field geologist or somebody who studies, you know, uh, geology at this current level that we are teaching in our universities, they're not able to comment on this. This is beyond them. Mathematical ability doesn't exist, unfortunately. Our courses are watered down and we are waiting for somebody to actually venture into this and actually studies from a mathematical point of view. Celestial mechanics plays a role in this. The knowledge exists in these fields and uh, something you uh, practically we are saying that geology is basically a forensic science in that sense. We do forensics. Uh, we don't use much mathematical tools, unfortunately, these days. We don't teach them to our students. So the skills are not there. And the people who can do this must know mathematics, must know physical, you know, celestial mechanics of these uh, interactions. The battery center, we know that the battery center of the earth moon system is inside the earth mantle and uh, we, we have the biggest you know uh, satellite uh, mother planet uh, s- size uh, twin planet in the solar system plus the pluto probably